Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be testing out gimmicky guitar gadgets. These are things that are kind of useless, but also kind of cool. A phrase that nicely sums up the bulk of my existence. None of these products were given to me. This video is not sponsored. I'm gonna be as brutally honest as I want. If you're interested in any of the products I mentioned today, I'll put up Amazon links in the description. Let's dive in. First up, we've got the hammer jammer. It attaches to your guitar. Slam the hammer, it whams down on the strings for an interesting timbre. You have the option of installing different hammers. The black one sounds darker, the white one sounds fatter. I personally prefer the latter. But enough chitter chatter, pitter patter, let's get at her. Here's a demo of the hammer jammer. here is that this thing mimics the sound triggering mechanism of a piano. Instead of plucking your strings, you smack this little button here, which causes the hammer to strike the strings. The installation was pretty simple. It doesn't require any drilling or permanent modifications. My biggest complaint with this is it does take a fair bit of effort to get it set up just right. You're meant to bend the plastic to get these things in perfect place, which doesn't seem like the best option. Especially if you break one, the whole thing is gonna need replacing. I feel like it wouldn't have been that hard to design it so that the setup is significantly easier. It's a lot of fun though, and there are definitely some unique sounds you'll get with it. There is a learning curve, and I know I need to spend more time with it before I unlock its full potential. It's $70, but it does feel well made despite the couple of issues I have with the design. Are you gonna use it for every song or even regularly? Probably not, but as far as gimmicky guitar gadgets go. I like this one. Let's move on. Next up we have the jellyfish pick. Now jellyfish in the ocean are cool unless you come into contact with one and get stung. The same holds true with the jellyfish pick except it's not in the ocean and it's not cool at all. In fact it belongs in the garbage and I passionately dislike it. When I was learning guitar in the early 2000s I had a subscription to Guitar One which I read religiously. And in it there was always a full page ad devoted to the jellyfish pick. It said, for just $9.95 your guitar can sound like six other instruments. All you need is jellyfish. You use it like a pick, but it does so much more. With just a few minutes practice, you can emulate the sounds of a resonator guitar, 12 string guitar, harpsichord, dulcimer, violin, and cello. So being the young impressionable teen I was, I bought one. Here's the closest I could get it to sound to a 12 string. Here's the closest I could get it to sound to a violin. Rather than sounding like another instrument, I think it sounds more like a guitar being scraped along the pavement. I can't imagine how anyone would find any value in this. It's just a piece of plastic with a bunch of old guitar strings attached to it and then cut at an angle. I don't think they even make them anymore. The website's a broken link, the market has spoken, and it said no. I've been pushing down these emotions since 2003. It feels good to finally get this off my chest. Okay, next up we have the Planet Waves Pick Strobe Tuner. This is a small compact tuner built into a pick. You use the dial to select what string you are tuning. Pick that string at the 12th fret, hold the light over top, and if the light is moving around, it is out of tune. If it is still, then it's in tune. Easy as that, let's check it using everyone's favorite app, Guitar Tuna. Says it's in tune. I got this years ago for free in a box of strings. As far as I can tell, it's been discontinued, so who really cares? Go use the Guitar Tuna app like everyone else. Moving on, we have this finger presser thing, also known as the Easy Fret. You attach it onto your guitar neck using rubber bands, and now instead of having to fret the strings, all you need to do is press buttons. Here's the demo. Some of my finer work. I guess the concept here is that as a beginner, it can be difficult to fret one string without blocking the other. This is a quick fix, but I'm morally opposed to this thing and wish it was never made. First of all, the stretches your fingers need to make to play any basic chords are incredibly tough. This is me playing a C major. I've never worked so hard to play an open C in my life. 
It's confusing to visualize, and if you're using this thing, when you eventually do take it off, you're gonna need to start over again. But even if it worked well and was easy to use, this thing is still trash. Music is not about taking shortcuts and cheating, and that's what this is. If you're having trouble getting your fingers positioned properly, you need to practice more and find a way to get over that hurdle. This is not the answer. The only way I'd be okay with someone using this is if they have some sort of insurmountable physical ailment that prevents them from playing guitar properly, and this is literally the only option. Otherwise, find an environmentally friendly way to dispose of it. Next up is the spider capo, designed so that you can pick individual strings to depress instead of having to push them all down like a standard capo. You screw it in to attach it to your neck, you then press down these little doohickeys to pick which strings you are fretting. This is pretty cool. Back in the day my old band had a song where I had to put a mandolin capo on my neck that pressed down three strings so I got an open A. This would have made that significantly easier. There's a lot of other cool and creative things you could do with it. Here's a demo. I like it. I wouldn't mind having a couple more so I could get real detailed with the tunings. This one is limited to one fret with multiple capos. You could put them all across the guitar neck and get real creative. It serves as a nice option to alternate tunings as it allows you to conceptualize the neck as you normally would. Moving right along, we have these colored rubber finger guards designed to protect your fingers from the ailment known as guitar calluses. Stick them on and go to town. <laughs> My thoughts, I would rather see the Toronto Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup than have to use these again. Okay, I'm sorry, I got carried away. That's a little bit excessive and it could happen relatively soon, so I need to start mentally prepping for that. Anyways, they feel extremely unnatural. You can't slide because your fingers get stuck. Hammer-ons, pull-offs feel weird, and I feel if I use them for any extended period of time, they would get all shredded up. Look, I get it, these are intended for beginners, not someone like me who has leather pads on the tips of their fingers. They're for delicate young children who don't wanna hurt their fingers. But if I had some seven-year-old come to a lesson of mine wearing these things, I would say, listen, bub, sometimes the best things in life require a little bit of pain. There's a reason why Brian Adams sings about playing his guitar until his fingers bled. We all went through it to get to where we are. Now give me those idiotic little rubber thimbles and I'm gonna dispose of them in an environmentally friendly fashion. And lastly, we have the Ebo. In a world of e-transfers, emails, e commerce and emus, of course we also would have an e-bow. It's the electronic version of a violin bow designed for guitar and it looks strikingly similar to a hole puncher. It uses magnets and magic to vibrate the string, sustaining it indefinitely, much like a sustainer pickup would. Here's an example. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, it's easy to use, it's fun, and I imagine there's a lot of possibility to get creative and work on some tougher techniques. Of all the things we looked at, I suspect I'll end up using this one the most. It works as advertised, it's well built, it provides a unique function, and it's fun. At $100, it's definitely not cheap, but I feel that's a fair price. And come to think of it, I'm pretty sure Sarah McLaughlin's guitarist used an Ebo in a slide when I saw her in concert. That was a great show, also one of the few concerts I've been to where it smelled like perfume, not pot. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Give Key Guitar Gadgets, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna buy any of these products, I put Amazon links in the description to the ones that are available. I've done some other videos on gear, you can check those out by hitting that link over there. And if you like what I do, please consider heading over to my Patreon page. Through that, I offer things like early access, tabs to the music I release, and a monthly giveaway for everyone involved. If you're new here, hit subscribe, stay a while. Thank you all for watching. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you again soon.